All right, guys, what's going on? So today we're going to cover command injection. Um, most of you are probably familiar with this. This is going to be um, probably the most common thing that you see as far as like when someone talks about hacking, movies, stuff like that. This is the type of stuff that you're going to usually see. Um, so this is probably what you're familiar with and what you've done before. So we're going to cover this quickly, but we're still going to cover it. So this is the next box in the junior pen testing as well, but this one doesn't really have that much hands-on. So what is command injection first? So it's similar to what we did with um, the other injections. The difference is this is letting us, instead of going to different files or view different things, this is letting us execute commands exactly as is. So what that means is we can actually run a who am I on the box itself and it will give us who it's logged in as, right? So that's what the who am I command does and it's letting us run that directly on the box. So that's what command injection is. Now let's see some examples. So this is discovering command injection. So what that means is this is actually showing the back end code. Obviously we, we don't typically have access to it if it's a, an application that's already published or so on and so forth. Sometimes you will have access if it's open source type stuff. So either way, it doesn't matter. Um, what they're showing here is an example of it. And what they're showing is, if you see this here, it says songs equals boom, boom, boom. That's the variable. If you guys aren't familiar with coding, that is a variable that they're defining right there. And then it's saying title get, it's using the get command to get a title from you. So what, what this whole script is doing, or this program is doing, excuse me, is it's going to ask you for a title of a song then you give it the title of a song and then it's going to grep or search for that title in this song title.txt file. If it finds it, it's gonna say, yep, that song exists. If it doesn't find it, it's gonna say it doesn't exist. So now this looks like a regular code to everybody, but what you can see here is that grep command is there. So instead of title where we define it, what if we put, instead of just a you know title of a song, let's say instead of just like a country song or something, we actually put the and sign and then ls, right? It's gonna read that, it's gonna change that to text and it's gonna read that as grep and run the ls command. So what it's gonna do is it's gonna grep, but it's also gonna list the file or list what's in the directory for us. So it's actually, able to do what we want just by executing a command and changing that title to a command that we want. And that, and hopefully that makes sense to you guys. Um, basically, and that, that's kind of what's showing you here is some, is some examples of it. This is the same thing. It's an example of it where it's um, calling upon a, a function that then you can change and run commands. So the key to it though is being able to discover this. So what they tell you to do is there's a couple of commands that you can run and I don't know if that's in this section but basically what they're gonna do is you're gonna run um, either a ping command or a sleep command and what that'll do is if you see that delay in time before it gives you results that's pretty good uh, pretty good indication that hey this this is working right so there's two types and I don't know if they cover that maybe they covered it here um, but either way there's two types, there's blind and then there's verbose. So blind searching or blind uh, command injection is similar to the other blind ones we've done. And what that is, is basically you're not gonna get a direct um, response from the server. You're not gonna see those results. So there's ways to um, make sure it's working. One of them is the ping command and the sleep command. Um, basically just to see if that delay exists because if it's delaying, based on, let's say you told it to ping 100 times and it delays for a while, you know it's probably delayed. It's probably working, right? Um, sleep command, if you say sleep for 10 seconds and then you run the command and the page sleeps for 10 seconds and then gives you the result you expect, then you know, hey, it's, it's working. Now, verbose command is where you can actually run the command and it's gonna give you the output right there on the page and that's what we're gonna deal with uh, in the example today. So. I know we just covered a lot, but a lot of that's in this reading, so that's why I'm not going to go word for word in this because you guys are obviously gonna do this box if you're watching the video and you're gonna read this, right? So that's that's the important thing. Um, my, my job here is to explain it in layman's terms in a way that you guys get it, I get it, 
and it's a way that makes sense rather than reading a bunch of fancy terms, right? Because sometimes you read these and you're like, I have no idea what they're talking about, right? So this is what they're talking about. So here it says what HTTP method is used to retrieve. So first it said what variable stores the user's input in the PHP code. And you can see the user's input right there, it's get title. So the title input is stored as title. So that's what it's saying here. So when you call upon that later in the, in the code, it's gonna be title. So now what HTTP method is used to retrieve data submitted by a user? And that is the get. So, or actually that looks like, yeah. So what HTTP method and it's the get. So that what they're saying is that's what they're using to retrieve that later or to retrieve that um, data that you submit. Um, if I wanted to execute the ID command in the Python code, so let's cover this Python code script here real quick. What they're showing is simply, they break it down here for you. Um, this first part actually sets up a web server. The second part is a sub process that pack, uh, package, excuse me, to comm execute commands on the device. And then what they're doing here is they're actually using the route that it uses and they're running their own commands on it. And what that means is if you visit this flask app.thm, I don't know if it's a real site, probably not, right? Because it's a .thm. And then you run, you put anything on the end, it's going to run that command because that's what it's told to do it in the um, code. So, and this is, that's a real injection or a real um, command injection that can happen, right? So here it's saying if I wanted to execute the ID command, I would type in flask app.thm forward slash ID, right? And that will actually give you the results of that ID on the backend server. And you can see how this can get pretty dangerous. This is a very, very dangerous or a vulnerability that exists because if if it's this obvious, um, I mean, you can have a field day with their, with their server, right? Especially if you can run anything. And we're gonna cover how to actually fix this too and avoid it. Okay, so here they're talking about the blind and verbose and the different types. And you can see here, they're just kind of telling you, you can use ping and sleep. At, uh, you can also, one thing that I didn't cover that you can do in a blind injection is you can actually take, let's say you run a LS command, you're not gonna see those results right away be, or at all because again, it's it's a blind command or a blind command injection. So what that means is the backend server ran it, but it doesn't give you the results on the, on the front part where you're looking at it, whether it be an application or what. So what you can do is you can use this um, operator. And if you know Linux well, you know this already. Um, you can basically write it to a file is what it's gonna do. And then you can actually cat or read that file. So if you are if you have com uh, command execution on the server, but you can't see the results, you can write them on to a file and then view them that way, right? And that's what they're saying. So um, here, this one is actually using the curl command and it's saying curl. And then here's the vulnerable app. And then you see here, it's actually, this is encoded, but it's saying, search the Beatles and who am I? So it's saying, search the Beatles because that's what the app is supposed to do. And then it's saying, by the way, tell me who you're logged in as and it'll work, right? Depending, or as long as it's set up. Now here they give you a few examples. Um, if you guys are doing these boxes, the junior pen testing lab, you should probably already know this stuff as far as who am I, LS, ping, sleep, netcat, all that. Um, same thing with Windows, these are basic commands, who am I, dir, ping, timeout, very similar, just different words, right? Uh, Netcat can be used for a reverse shell. You should be familiar with um, Netcat, at least setting it up a, a little bit, you know? Um, if you're not, feel free to, they've got tons of boxes on here for it. Um, if you guys want to see a Netcat specific um, video, then I can do one. It's just not really that difficult to understand. Um, so it won't be a very long video, but I can definitely do that. Um, so what payload would I use if I wanted to determine what user the application is running as? That'd be who am I? So what that means is just going to tell you whatever you're doing, who it's saying is doing it. So for instance, if your name's John and you set up the actual application and you were using your own login to do it the whole time and you use that as a service account, um, when they type who am I, it's going to say John. It's not going to say www data or whatever so what popular network tool would i use for blind command injection on linux so this is just ping they're saying um 
everyone knows ping is used as a popular network tool to actually um, test connectivity. So what payload would I use to test a Windows machine for blind command direction? And that's this one here, the timeout, and it says it here, but it's very similar to the sleep. It's just gonna hang the application for X amount of time. All right, so now remediating command direction. So how do we fix this, right? And this is the big question. This is the one that um, a lot of security analysts and a lot of SOC and things like that are looking at. What it is, is it's just validation. It's, it's pretty much how you fix most injection attacks, right? So this command injection, here it's the same thing. They're running the, the ping command, but what they're looking for is they're saying here, your input is gonna be text and it's gonna, basically it has to follow this pattern is what they're saying. They're saying it has to be zero through nine. If it's anything outside zero through nine, so if it's not a one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, or nine, if it's a, you know, L or S for LS, right? Then let's get rid of it. Don't don't actually let that be the input. And what that is, is it's basically a filter in a sense, but it's just a way of validating that what you expect them to type in is what gets typed in because you never know what people are gonna type into these fields. So here, input sanita sanitization, it's the same thing. You're getting rid of anything that basically is, you're sanitizing their command or their input, excuse me. So here they're saying here, it's a process of specifying the formats or types of data that a user can submit. So again, if you're looking for strings, so let's say you say, hey, what is your name in a text or in a, a application, right? And I put, and ls well i'm looking for these little operators the and the caret the forward slash and the reason for it is because i know you're you're trying to do something sketchy with that you're not that's not your name your name doesn't have an and in it right so if it has that character in it get rid of it invalidate it don't count right don't let it come through so that's what sanitization is is it's sanitizing the t the data that's actually being inputted um here is bypassing filters, and, I, and you saw this with the polygot before. Um, basically, what you're looking at here is the hexadecimal versions of the same commands. So a computer reads in binary, right? That's all it knows at its core. So you can specify the same things as long as they come out the same way to the computer, and it's going to read it. So this is the same payload, and you, what you can do is, uh, I'm not going to do it on here, but you can do it on CyberChef you could type in your command, right? And then say two hexadecimal, and it's gonna give you these. And then therefore you could actually put that in and you probably get away from, or away through a lot of these filters because they don't know to look for, you know, X77 or X73 or whatever. Those are valid characters. So it's not gonna understand that, hey, we should get rid of that. Now there are some uh, more complex filtering systems and stuff that will catch some of these things, but for the simple ones, you'll get through it, right? So what is the term or the process of cleaning? Well, this is sanitization. And I spelled that right first try, wow, okay. All right, so now we got the practical. So the machine's already started here. Let's see if it'll pop up. I might have to end it and, nope, it's already up, so we're good. So what it does is this is a machine and you can see it's at Acme IT Services again. They have a dashboard, a help desk, and a diagnose. So what it is is you it's a tool they use where, hey, type in your IP address and we'll tell you if you have connection, right? So that this is a way if, if your work computer's not connecting, whatever the case is, and all it's doing on the back end is it's taking that IP address and putting ping in front of it, right? So when you put ping in front of it, it's gonna tell you. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna do 127.0.0.1, which is our own computer. We're gonna execute and you'll see the delay in the ping command. So this is what they're talking about when they say, um, if you're not sure if the execution is gonna work, ping and use the ping command and you'll see this delay, watch. So I just clicked it and we're waiting, we're waiting, we're waiting, we're waiting, boom, there it pops out. Okay, so there's our command and there's the ping and you see that delay because it had to send multiple pings now if we actually do the um the actual command that we want which is let's say ls right and we execute watch how fast it is boom and it says 
CSS image index.php test.php. So that's listing the directory we're in. So now the first thing it's saying is, and you understand hopefully what I did and what that is is so on the back end this is reading ping and then whatever I input here, but it doesn't validate it. So if I put and it's gonna say and run this command, which is the ls command I ran there. Now if we do the and and we say this is asking what user is the application running as, that's the next question. So let's say and who am I, right? And who am I? And it's www data right there. So this is obviously not blind because they're actually submitting it right back to us. But we'll go ahead and put the answer www.data. Perfect. And now it's saying what are the contents of the flag located in home try hack me flag dot text. So what we'll say is and and we'll do cat. And one thing I did try, guys, you can see it here. I tried to change directory and see if it actually stays there when I run the next command, and it does not. So what we did here is just and cat the flag, and you'll see here we get the flag. Okay, cool. Try hack me. And we got command injection complete. Now, where you guys can see this might seem like a cool little parlor trick or something, right? But where this can get really sketchy is we know this is a Linux box because it's taking the ls commands and stuff. Um, obviously, PowerShell and stuff can do some of this as well now, but this is a Linux box. So what we could do is we could actually set up a netcat listener with just one line of code and then connect to it and we'd have a direct reverse shell into the box, right? So now we can take over everything. We don't need this little tool anymore. So keep that in mind when you guys are doing these. It's not just about this simple um, little neat trick where, okay, I can see who's logged in, I can do this, whatever. Um, one thing I could do, and we'll see if it'll actually let me, it might, it might not, is we could say and cat the Etsy and shadow probably won't work, but we'll, we can try it. Let's see if it'll give us the shadow file. I'll probably say permission denied. All right, so it didn't do it, perfect. And cat Etsy password file. And there you go. So now you can see, just by doing that, I now have a list of every user on this box, right? So that's the type of stuff that you can get real uh, scary with, I would say. But the first thing a hacker would do realistically if they did this is either set up a back door for themselves or if let's say this has an SSH port open for admin purposes, um, we could create our own account and then SSH in, right? So a lot of a lot of different things you can do here, right? So that's it, guys. That's the box. This conclusion just says, uh, in conclusion, you know what we learned, blah blah blah. So one thing I do want to say, guys, is we reached 100 subs. So I am gonna do a video. Um, it was recommended to me by one of the one of the viewers, and it's an awesome idea. Um, we're gonna do a video on ransomware and kind of. A less technical interview or interview a less technical video and more of what ransomware actually is how it affects people why it's such a problem and what you can do to prevent it that type of stuff so it's more of a general PSA in a sense but it's something that I think um, a lot of people kind of have false um, understanding of so that's gonna be something we we're gonna dive into and hopefully you guys are liking this uh, series we're gonna keep it going um, I probably won't upload on the weekends, just to let you guys know, mainly because, um, you know, that's seven days a week is a lot to, to do these videos. So we'll probably keep it to five days a week until the junior pen testing is done. Um, maybe once the boxes get a little harder or if they start taking a lot of time, maybe an hour video or something, we'll start slowing the uploads down. But for now, hopefully to keep doing them the way they are and hopefully you guys like them. If you do, like and subscribe. I appreciate it. Thanks, guys.